What's up, everybody? It's JT Sports back to you guys with another video. In this video, I'm here with the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Baltimore Ravens Week 1 preseason preview. Going to be previewing this game. Going to be giving you guys some things to watch and some players to watch for this preseason matchup, which I think is going to be very, very important in determining several things this coming season for both teams. So before I begin, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, below NFL videos and NFL content daily. And let's get into it. So this week one matchup, we got the Baltimore Ravens, Jacksonville Jaguars facing up. And I think this matchup is going to be pretty interesting. So some things to watch for both teams. Um, Lamar Jackson, I want to see... How much has he improved as a passer? Now, I know this is preseason. Both of the teams aren't really going to be going all out. But I still think that this Jacksonville Jaguars secondary is still a good um, measuring stick to see how much he has improved. Because the secondary is supposed to be one of the best in football. Well, they have the best cornerback tandem in the in the NFL when it comes to stopping the pass with A.J. Boye and Jalen Ramsey. And the Jacksonville Jaguars defense is one of the best teams when it comes to stopping the pass in the NFL. So I think Lamar Jackson here will be getting a pretty solid test in this matchup. And also in the Jacksonville Jaguars and Baltimore Ravens joint practices that they've been having all this week, Lamar Jackson has been doing pretty good so far. So this preseason game would just be able to cap off a very solid week and a very productive week from what we've seen out of Lamar Jackson so far in his development of becoming the better passer in the NFL. And he, like I said, he's had some pretty good joint practices this week with the Baltimore Ravens against the Jacksonville Jaguars defense. And this preseason game would just be a good capping off point to cap off a solid week in his development as a passer. Now we got to talk about the wideouts for the Baltimore Ravens. Now, the Baltimore Ravens, other than Willie Sneed, have a very young core of wide receivers. Most of these guys haven't even started the NFL game yet. So it's going to be really interesting seeing how these wide receivers do in this game here. Mostly the backup guys to see if who's going to end up making the roster because every preseason game is really, really important when it comes to determining the depth and who's going to end up being the backups. And a lot of these guys on the roster, when the Baltimore Ravens started doing their 53 man and cuts a lot of these wide receivers that we're probably going to see in this game most likely will not make the roster after they trim down the roster from 90 to 53. Now some things I'm looking forward to watching for the Jacksonville Jaguars is the offensive line. Now their offensive line struggled a lot last season specifically due to the injuries that they suffered so in this game I want to see how this offensive line is looking. I know nobody's going to be playing 100%, but you still want to kind of get a little bit of an idea of how this offensive line looks going into this season. Then the last thing to watch for me for the Jacksonville Jaguars is quarterback Nick Foles. Now, Nick Foles, he signed with the Jacksonville Jaguars in free agency this year, and I think he's an upgrade from Blake Bortles. And it's going to be interesting seeing how he does in this game and taking his first snaps as a Jacksonville Jaguar unofficially because the regular season is the one that counts. But in the preseason, it's going to be interesting seeing what he looks like as a starting quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars team. And maybe we get a little bit of an idea of how the offense will look this year as well. Most teams in the preseason don't really reveal their whole entire offense, but we can kind of get a little bit of a sneak peek. And maybe we get a sneak peek of what Nick Foles is going to be able to do with the Jacksonville Jaguars team. Now, he's not really going to play that much. He's probably only going to play like a series or two, and then they're probably going to put in the backups or whatnot. But I'm really going to be interested in seeing how Nick Foles performs in this game. Now, some players to watch for the Baltimore Ravens. First player to watch is quarterback Trace McSorley. Um, this is a guy who is kind of in a good situation when it comes to seeing if he's going to end up being that backup quarterback because RG3 suffered an injury. We don't really know how he's going to be looking, and he's not even going to be able to play in preseason, I don't think, at all. So Trace McSorley has a good opportunity to step up. He's probably going to get a lot of playing time, and 
I think this is a guy who I think most likely will end up making the roster. If he doesn't make the roster, he should at least make the practice squad. But most likely he will end up making the roster. And I really want to see how he does against some NFL level competition. Although it probably won't be first stringers and stuff like that. It'll probably be some backups and second team defense with Jacksonville Jaguars. But I still want to see how good Trace McSorley is at this stage in the NFL. Next up, the halfbacks. Now, the Baltimore Ravens have a lot of halfbacks on the roster, but the main ones I'm going to be keying on that I think we're going to be seeing having a lot of playing time is Justice Hill, who they drafted in this year's NFL draft, the speedster out of Oklahoma State, and Kenneth Dixon. Now, Justice Hill is supposed to be the change of pace back for the Baltimore Moore Ravens, and Kenneth Dixon is a guy who a lot of Baltimore Ravens fans have told me when I ask them who do they think is better, Gus Edwards or Kenneth Dixon, people always say Gus Edwards because Kenneth Dixon has the fumbling issues and things like that. And a lot of Baltimore Ravens fans think Kenneth Dixon could end up getting traded or released or something like that. So I think this is a very important game for him. And also Justice Hill as well, getting a little bit of experience in there. Then at wide receiver position, got Marquise Brown, Jalen Smith, and Miles Boykin. Now, I'm not expecting to see a lot of Marquise Brown in this game. Um, I would really be surprised if we even see him playing this game at all, but I believe he'll probably will take a few snaps, but I don't think we're going to see a lot of Marquise Brown in this game. He'll probably be in for a series or two, and he'll probably come out when they take Lamar Jackson out, but I'm eager to see if he does get into the game. Is Baltimore going to try to target him early to see what he can do? But I'm not really expecting a lot out of him. It's just a player that I'm going to be watching to see what he does if the Baltimore Ravens do indeed have him play in a couple of series. Then you got Jalen Smith there. Now, Jalen Smith was the college teammate of Lamar Jackson when he played for Louisville. Last season, his production dropped off tremendously due to how bad the Louisville quarterback situation was. And I think that Jalen Smith really got signed by the Baltimore Ravens just because of of Lamar Jackson, really. Maybe Lamar Jackson went up to the ownership or something like that. The general manager is like, hey, sign my guy or get my guy a tryout. See how he does or something like that. So it's going to be interesting seeing what he does this preseason because it's going to be interesting seeing if he even makes the roster or the practice squad or not because he's very raw, has a lot of things that he has to work on. So this is going to be a very big game for him. So I'm going to be looking forward to seeing what he does in this game. And the last wide receiver who I'm going to be watching is Miles Boykin. Now, Miles Boykin. He's supposed to be in the mix for competing for one of those starting wide receiver spots for the Boston or Baltimore Ravens this season, and that's going to help out a lot since they released Jordan Lashley. Now he's on the Oakland Raiders, so Miles Boykin, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of him this game as well. Then you got tight end Hayden Hurst. Now they have a lot of other tight ends. You got Andrews there, you got Boyle, but I think we're going to be seeing a lot of Hayden Hurst this game simply for the fact that he was listed by Ireland's.com as the third string tight end on the depth chart right now, so I think we're going to end up seeing a lot of Hayden Hurst there. Then off to the tackle, Orlando Brown. Orlando Brown should be with the first team. He should be starting. But I just want to see where he's going to be at this game because a lot of people are raving about how he's been in the joint practices this week against Jacksonville Jaguars and how good he's been. Also with Lamar Jackson being good as well. So I just want to see him. Same thing I said about Lamar Jackson. I just want to see him cap off what has been a very solid and productive week. Then... At the defense side of the ball, defensive tackle Jared Willis and Dalen Mack. Dalen Mack, big guy who's should be able to, who's probably on the roster to stop the run. He his roster spot should be pretty much solidified. I don't think I can see him getting released. I think they draft him, and then you got Gerald Willis, who they got as an undrafted free agent. Really, really surprised that he went undrafted. And we're most definitely going to see a lot of Jared Willis. And I'm really eager because I'm a Miami Hurricane fan. And I want to see what he's going to be able to do at the NFL level. Now, we got a couple of other guys when it comes to the pass rushing unit. You got edge rusher Jalen Ferguson out of Louisiana Tech. He was a guy who was supposed to be a first-round talent in this year's draft, but he ended up falling out of the first round due to character issues and things like that. So we should end up seeing a lot of him in this game. And then... Patrick Owasu and Shane Ray are also some linebackers, too. I'm going to be looking forward to seeing Patrick Owasu. We probably won't see that much of him. He'll probably only be on for about a series or two or however long the first team defense stays on there. Then also Shane Ray, who they got in free agency from the Denver Broncos. Shane Ray is a guy who's trying to kind of re resurrect his career. So I think we're going to end up seeing a lot of him in this game as well. And the last player that I'm looking forward to seeing for the Baltimore Ravens is my guy, Deshaun Elliott. Deshaun Elliott should be seeing a lot of 
playing time. He didn't really play that much last season. He had like some kind of injury that kept him out of action. But he had a pretty good preseason last year. So it's eager to see what he does this year and his second league and his second year at the NFL level and this preseason game here. He's one of my favorite players in the NFL right now, so I'm going to be watching him. Now the players to watch for the Jacksonville Jaguars. You got rookie quarterback Gardner Minshew. He's right now has been pretty solid for the Jacksonville Jaguars this offseason. He's listed as their backup quarterback right now, so it's going to be interesting what he does in his first NFL action. Then you got halfback with Crow Armstead. Now he's a guy who can play both fullback and running back, but I want to see what he does in this game because I want to see if he could end up being a good complimentary piece to Leonard Fournette since they did let TJ Yeldon go. He's now with the Buffalo Bills. So I want to see how good is Raquel Armstead going to be. Then the wide receivers are going to be watching DJ Chart, Chris Conley, and Terrell Pryor. DJ Chart was a guy who didn't really have that much production last year in his rookie year. They didn't really touch the field that much. So I think this preseason game is going to be key for him. If we want to see him end up getting some more playing time this year. Then you got Chris Conley there. Let me keep my eyes on him. And then you got Terrell Pryor. Now, Terrell Pryor is a guy who's kind of been on a couple of teams. The last time I remember him being on was the New York Jets. He didn't really do that much. So it's going to be interesting to see and how he does in this preseason game. And, and is he even going to be good enough to make the Jacksonville Jaguars roster? Then you got tight end Josh Oliver, the rookie tight end who they drafted in this year's NFL draft. This guy reminds me a lot of Jimmy Graham. Has a has a similar body build, similar playing style. The question with him is how productive will he be in this preseason game and how good will he be blocking for the Jacksonville Jaguars team? Because Jacksonville Jaguars are a team that's going to want to run the football a lot this year. So they're going to want to have tight ends that are very solid when when it comes to that blocking aspect. So I'm going to be seeing how good is he going to be. Then defensive end Josh Allen, who they got in this year's draft. He fell out of the top five. Don't know how. So they got to steal with him. We want to see what he does. And a few snaps that he'll probably take in this game as well. Then linebacker Quincy Williams. Now Quincy Williams, I think we're going to see Quincy Williams in for a good bit. Um, he's the guy who's supposed to be replacing Telman Smith. So I want to see how he does. I expect him to be in for at least a half or a quarter at least. So the Jacksonville Jaguars can get a good look at him and what he does in in-game action. So this is it for my Jacksonville Jaguars, Baltimore Ravens week one preseason preview. Let me know some guys who you guys are going to be watching down in the comment section down below. Also make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more NFL videos and content. And thanks for watching.